Orlando, dost thou think this shepherd boy Ganymede can do all that he hath promised? My lord, I sometimes do believe and sometimes do not. As long as they fear, they hope to know they fear. <laughs> oh, patience once more, while that compact is urged. You say? If I bring your Rosalind, you'll bestow her hair on Orlando. Aye, and had I kingdoms to give with her. <laughs> and you say you'll have her when I bring her? That would I, were I of all kingdoms king. You say you'll uh, marry me if I be willing. That will I, should I die the hour after. <laughs> but if you do refuse to marry me, you'll wed yourself to this most faithful shepherd. So that was the bargain. Uh, you say you'll have her if she choose you. Uh, vote to have her and death were both one thing. <laughs> uh, I promise to make all these matters even. Give you your word, O Duke, to give your daughter. You yours, Orlando, to receive his daughter. Keep you your word, Phoebe, that you'll have me, or else refusing me with the shepherd. And keep you your word, Sylvester, that you'll have her. And from henceforth I go to make all these matters even. <laughs> Orlando, this shepherd boy Ganymede, I do spy some sparks of spirit like my daughter. <laughs> oh, my lord. The first time I saw him, he thought he was a brother to your daughter. My good lord, this boy is but Thoris born, and hath been tutored in many desperate studies by his uncle, whom he reports to be a great magician, obscured in the circles of this forest. There is sure another flood toward, and these couples are coming to the ark. <laughs> Here comes a pair of very strange beasts, which in all tongues are all fools. Oh, good my lord, bid him welcome. Oh, this is the motley-minded gentleman that I have so often met in the forest. He has been a courtier, he swears. And if any man doubt that, let him put him to his purgation. <laughs> he has um, trod a measure. He has flattered a lady. He has been politic with his friend, smooth with his enemy. He has undone three tailors. And he's had four quarrels, and like to have fought one. And how is that, Tainer? Well, very well, my lord. Like this fellow? Hmm. I like him very well, eh? Huh? <laughs> oh, oh, he is uh, most uh, swift and uh, sententious. <laughs> That is not my thing, heaven. When I play things that even at all together.
Do those ends that here were well begun and well begot, and afterwards each of this happy number that have endured shrewd days and nights with us shall share in our new fortunes, each according to the measures of their states. Meantime, forget this old form dignity and fall into a new rustic revelry. <laughs> Play music, and you brides and bridegrooms all with measures heaped in joy to the measures fall. <laughs> <laughs> you, to your new honor I decree, your patience and your virtue well deserves it. You, to a love that your true faith doth merit. You, to your land and love that your great allies. You, to a long and well deserved bed. <laughs> and you, to wrangling. For thy loving voyage is but for two months victualled. <laughs> so to your pleasures, I am for other than for dancing measures. No. Oh, stay, Jake, we stay! To see no pastime I, I shall put on the religious life, and cast off from the pompous court what you would have. I'll stay to know at your abandoned cave. Proceed, proceed. We'll begin these rites as we do trust they'll end. In true delights! <laughs> Tis not the fashion to see the lady in the epilogue. But it is no more unhandsome than to see the lord the prologue. If it be true that a good wine needs no bush, then tis true that a good play needs no epilogue. <laughs> <laughs> Yet to good wine they do use good bushes, and good plays prove the better by the help of a good epilogue. <laughs> <laughs> what a case am I in then, that am neither a good epilogue, nor cannot insinuate with you in the behalf of a good play. I am not furnished like a beggar, therefore to beg will not become me. My way is to conjure you, and I'll begin with the women. I charge you, O oh, women, for the love you bear to men, to like as much of this play as please you. And I charge you, O oh, men, for the love you bear to women, as I perceive by your simpering, none of you hates them, <laughs> that between you and the women the play may please. If I were a woman, I would kiss as many as had beards that pleased me, complexions that liked me, and the breaths that I defied not. And I'm sure as many as have good beards, or kind faces, or sweet breaths, will for my kind offer, when I make curtsy, bid me farewell. 